you remember this project from a few months back? It was intended to swing the camera slowly up above here just to get me some different shots. And it sort of worked. The thing that didn't work properly was the stepper motor that I had originally mounted on here. Um, this one it was mounted on a 3D printed base over here was too jerky even in micro stepping mode to move it smooth enough to create a usable camera motion so i am going to try something different i went shopping for some dc motors and i found these two at princess auto uh, in their surplus department so we'll see if either of them move slowly enough these are both gearhead motors and I believe they are both intended to be 12 volt motors. Oh, this one says it's a 9 volt motor. Okay. And this one, I don't think it says. But regardless, we will work with them. Now, this one has a little knurled shaft on it. And this one, I think it's a D shaft. Uh, yeah, it's a D shaft. It's also got some knurls on it. I'll save that wheel for something else later don't know if I'm going to need it or not, but let's just see what speed these guys will run at at 5 volts, I think, just for reasons that will become clear eventually. So, hang on, let me put a tape flag on there so you can see it. There, that's better. So this one... Yeah, that's not bad. That's a little noisy, though. Let's see what this one looks like at 5 volts. Don't know whether it'll be any better. That is much slower. It's a little noisier. They're both kind of noisy. I don't know whether you can hear them or not. Actually, if they're held off the workbench, it's a lot quieter. That one's slower, so I think I will use it. Well, we'll see. Going to have to print up a bracket to mount this on. And meanwhile, I will get busy on some other stuff. Because this control electronics here is intended to drive a stepper motor. Uh, we've got a 555 there. Uh, what is that? A regulator, a stepper driver, and a relay just for reversing. And what is that switch doing? Or oh, that's the micro stepping mode and speed. So I'm going to have to lose that and replace it with, with what? I'll replace it with this, which I'm hoping is a simple little reversing circuit that should just do the job. It needs one uh, double pole, double throw relay couple of micro switch limit switches which we already had from this design so we can use those and the mounting brackets we can reuse that as well anyway uh the two micro switches one is set in normally open mode one is set in normally closed mode um we have the uh, motor voltage coming in plus and minus on uh on the relay contacts the relay common goes out to the motor so when the relay is in the position it's shown in right now, it is relaxed, not energized. So there's positive voltage going to this side and negative voltage going to this side. When the relay pulls in, both of those switch over and we have negative voltage going to this side and positive voltage going to this side. So the motor goes the other direction. What causes the relay to change positions is the two limit switches. So right now the drawing is shown with it de-energized. So the motor is going in one direction and it goes until it hits this switch, which closes it, which sends five volts to this side of the relay, which powers on the relay and draws that in. When that's drawn in, then M2 becomes the positive, uh, motor connection number two becomes the positive. And that also puts positive voltage here through this diode, through this closed contact of the uh, other limit switch and keeps it uh, keeps the relay on until the uh, arm swings over and pops this limit switch open which drops out the relay and it reverses and relaxes the relay and it reverses and goes back in the original direction so digging through my box of relays 
turns out that most of the 5 volt, well, all the 5 volt relays that I have, that's a 48 volt. That one's a 12 volt. I think these are 5 volt. Yeah, those are 5 volt relays. Okay. So, what are these? Okay. So, that's the common and the normally closed, and that's normally open. Ah, but the commons on both sides are connected together. So that is a single pole double throw relay just with the poles on both sides. That's not going to help me any. Turns out the only double pole double throw relays that I've got are these little surface mount guys, which are 5 volt relays. Will that fit onto one of my dip adapters here? Uh, what is that one? It's a 14 pin. Will that fit? That's good, that's good, not good, good. Let's put those two pins, I think I could splodge that on there. Just like soldering any other surface mount. Put that corner down, I'll tag this corner down. Yeah, it's not going to be great, but I think it's going to work. Right, I'll just finish soldering the rest of those down, and then... Carry on to the next step. I think I'll load up that circuit on the breadboard, that circuit that I drew out earlier. Okay, so this is hooked up like this schematic I showed you earlier. Here's one of the limit switches, here's the other one. Um, it's just more convenient than using the ones that are mounted on, on that chunk of board for now anyway. Uh, let's see what happens instead of the motor just for now i got a couple of leds hooked up uh reversed to each other so there's one direction and then we hit the limit switch it goes to the other direction limit switch All right so that's working so now if we bring in the motor and hook one side up to there and the other side up to there we got motion in one direction hit the limit switch we got motion in the other direction hit the limit switch we got motion back in that direction cool i am a little concerned about how noisy that is when it's sitting on a hard surface that could be a problem because you know i'm making a video but can you hear that right now and can you hear it when i'm talking I guess that's the two uh, the two questions I need to ask. So now, just to transfer that to a piece of uh, proto board, so that I can mount it up properly, and yeah, and then just the rest of it's just mechanical. All right, that's all soldered up. I may even put a USB micro on there. Micro? Mini? The older one, anyway. Because you don't use those very many, very often these days. So I figured I'd put it on there. Um, here is the connections to the limit switches. And that should be the connection to the motor. But without the motor connected, it'll power it on. That's good. And... Yeah, that reverses. And that reverses. Good. Nice, so I'll just quickly connect up the motor and see if that works. And that one there, All right, power. Motion, cool. Um, okay, that reverses it, that reverses it. And the whole thing's only drawing about 65-ish milliamps, so that's not too bad either. I should be able to power that easily off any old USB brick that I've got kicking around here. Now to get on to the part that I'm least confident on, the mechanical stuff. Wish me luck. So, in order to uh, mount this up, I've got to measure where it fits. In order to do that, I had to print a pulley that would fit on here. I'm going to use the same timing belts as I used before. Um that i think is going to be too to be honest too short is that one it goes way over there will that work maybe what's this height here 
That looks like about 35 millimeters. Okay, I'll go and make up some sort of a bracket for that. And while I'm playing in CAD, I think I'm going to replace this little bit with one that's got a bigger uh, gear on it so that I can get uh, a better ratio. Because I still want some more reduction. Even though this one's relatively slow motor, I'd still like to have a little bit of reduction. So I think I'm going to print a different one of those too. I'll be back in a while. That came out fairly easily. A little bit of stringing, but not too bad. I suppose I could have put supports in those, but that's not really a critical service. You'll never see that, and the bolts are going to hide it anyway. Right, there is that part. And let's just see, does it fit? Um, grab some bolts here. I suppose I should have cleared that crud out of those holes, but whatever. Yeah, that's going to fit. One problem, I didn't uh, pick up any bolts. These carriage bolts are just some that I have on hand. So I guess I'm going to have to modify those because I don't feel like going out shopping yet again. Maybe not entirely perfect, but good enough. And that shouldn't have changed the fitment any, but at least, oh, well, screw it ever. At least I should be able to tighten them up now. So that's good. Let's quickly do that. And then, all right, that's bolted on there. So now, um, let's see how this works. I think I might have to. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to replace my bit of wood, I think. But that's okay. I have lots of wood in the garage. Plus, as I said, I have to replace that with a uh, higher gear ratio version. So I'm going to be taking this pretty much apart anyway. So I'll get busy on that and we will be back. Uh, probably after eliminating some boring parts from the edit. And uh, we'll see how I'm getting on. All right, uh, status update. I've got this all mounted on here. I've got this on here. I've got a bit of Loctite or Loctolf drying on the fastener up there. This spins nicely, but I've run into yet another headache. Um, yeah, that's going to be just the theme of this project. As it is, this is the second video on the project. Um, the problem is to get this tightened up, I either have to have it sitting at a wonky angle like that, or I have to cut some out of the board because the motor is too long. Now, I suppose I could reprint that again, reprint this again, raise it up higher, but I don't want to do that. That's encroaching onto my shelf up above my workbench. This space up here, which is already going to be a little bit compromised, but I don't really want to come down any further. So it looks like more carpentry. I'll cut myself a generous notch out. I'll try and leave some of the back because that is physically supporting the weight of the thing. And maybe I'll put another screw in there, but that's also difficult because it's a pain in the ass to get up in that area up there. But carpentry, hackery, more perseverance. After doing my chop job, just a quick test fit up here and make sure it still swings and it seems to. Although my wood's not parallel, but that's not, it's fine. I can adjust that. That's just this screw spacing. But yeah, I think that is going to work just fine. It'll stay up and out of the way. That's good. Next, let's get this guy mounted up. I think I can get three screws out of the four holes that I put in my base to line up. So I think that should be good. It's good enough. And yeah, I know that's not sitting square, but with one corner on there, then I can sort of rotate this around as a belt tensioner. 
and get a second screw back in that corner. And hopefully that will do the job. And I'll put a third one up front after this. And of course that fourth one won't fit in the front corner because I chopped the piece off, but I think this should work. Maybe. So I can't back drive that motor, but it's a gear motor and I couldn't back drive it uh, by hand anyway. But the belt's not slipping when I put a fair bit of pressure on it, so that's good. I think now I'm going to wire this up. And, oh, right, the limit switches. Yeah, I guess I better put those on there too. This one wants to be over here. And, yeah, let's get that in there. I'm going to try and avoid putting it up and down into position multiple times because it's just such an awkward place and I just don't want to. So just a quick test to see if I actually hit those limit switches. Yeah, that hits that one. Hits that one. I think I might have to adjust those a little bit more because yeah it hit the body of it before it hit the actual switch arm so now let's try this okay that's fully clicked over and it hasn't crashed into the mechanical bits that's good and this one yeah right there Next project is to make up some wires to go between the micro switches and the board. I'm just going to use these spade crimps. And I think just for you know, good measure, I'll use some, uh, some of these ferrules. I don't normally for, uh, for screw terminals, but they seem to be a good idea. They're popular in Europe and those guys, you know, you'd think know a thing or two. Uh, even though these are just are supposed to be crimped i am still going to solder them after i crimp them just for you know belts and suspenders because the wire is a little bit smaller than these crimps are supposed to be used for but these are the proper uh, lugs to go onto the micro switches so compromises must be made and then there's these crimp ferrule things uh, as i mentioned the european guys are really into these things and they've used them for a while they're relatively uncommon in north america in my experience but they just crimp on like that they hold the strands in place and then when you put them into the screw terminals as i said it tightens down and squashes it in place without malforming the the um strands it's a nice tight connection and then the last wiring thing to do is extend these motor wires now, normally I would just crimp them to the wire, but there's too much difference in the thickness of these wires. So I'm just going to solder them and heat shrink them and be done with it. And then the motor connections go on this terminal block over here. And I think we are ready for some testing. All right, I've got these wires just experimentally connected right now. I'm not sure if they need to be on the other switch or not because they don't know which direction this motor is going to turn um though i do have them uh, connected normally open and normally closed based on um, which pair they are back there so the possibilities are it could run in the correct direction and bang into the switches in reverse and just do it properly or it could run the opposite direction bang into the wrong switch and not do anything let's find out I got it right. Some of you may think that I'm uh, that I'm bluffing here, but no, I actually got it right. Now that is working far too fast, I think, for what I wanted. But that is pretty cool nonetheless. I think I might see if I can slow it down by reducing the voltage. I don't know if the motor will still work at, let's see, 4 volts. That is slower. And the relay is still doing its thing. Okay. Let's try and bring it down 
to three and a half volts to see what happens. At some point, it's going to stop working. Nothing's going to break, but it will just stop working. There's three and a half volts. That's noticeably slower. Should we try three? Actually, there's 2.75. Nope, that's not enough. That's not enough for the relay. The motor keeps working. 3.3 seems to be okay. Hmm. Well, I will try this. I think I'm going to install it, but first I do want to manage these cables a little bit better. And then I'll install it and see what happens. Uh, should I use these screw-on clips? Well, hold on. Maybe I'll try these little clips here because they are self-adhesive. They come with these little foam pads. So let's just maybe try one of those. I'm normally not a huge fan of these self-adhesive kind of uh, things because the adhesive dries up over time. But this is a pretty low stress application, so I think I can get away with it. But we will see. Put that, see, maybe there-ish. Clip those wires under it, clip those wires under it, and that one there. Hmm, that's not bad. From those back that way. Maybe put another one down over there. But good. Now the part that I've been avoiding, putting it back up there. Because this is kind of contortionist city for me to get up underneath here. I don't even know if I'm blocking the camera, but next I'll add the little camera holder thing on there and tighten it on. And then I can test it out with a full test. And then I'll mount the camera to it. This being a sports type camera, GoPro clone kind of thing. It's a very wide lens, so I just have to get close to sort of, it's kind of centered there, but it's fairly wide, 120 degree, I think, angle. So it's actually picking up back to there and fairly wide. And it's just slowly changing the angle as it runs. Hopefully, anyway. So let's see what happens when I start it. Hmm, it's a little bit noisy. Can you hear that? I think you can, can't you? That's problematic. I'm likely going to have to put some kind of foam padding or something around the motor, maybe? I don't know yet. But the camera is up out of view. That's good. So if I tilt way up, you can just barely see it, but... I never show you that angle. I'm usually down here anyways, so that's not a problem. But I guess I could just move it every once in a while and just have it take a shot and then move it again. Just way too fast and way too noisy. Or at least it's not shuddering around all over the place. And I think those shots should be usable if I need to use a moving shot. I stop this little camera and take that up and add that into the editing. Except for you've already seen the results of it already. But I think it's going to be smooth enough to use. Well, um, that was an improvement over the last iteration of this project. And... I don't know what else I can do with it. Uh, motors are always going to be noisy. Maybe I can mount the motor on some kind of padding or something. We'll have to see. Anyway, um, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm sure you've got some comments, so let's hear them down below. Thanks again. I'll talk to you later. Oh, my coffee's gone cold.